Today's episode of The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown is brought to you by Jeanette McKenzie, Realtor at Forest Hill Signature, Jewelry Forever at JewelryForever.ca, and Beautified by Romina. Enjoy the show. Broadcasting live from Glenmore Record Studios in Toronto, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown, your Sunday morning talk show with interesting guests, live musical performances, and the most fun you can fit in your coffee cup. Hosted by Scott Dion Brown and Regina Elena, this is The Sit Down with Scott Dion Brown. Popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> uh, excuse me, do you have um, the credentials to be here? I do. You have the credentials to I be do. here. We both have the credentials because everybody, you're not going to believe this, but here we are. It's our first ever on set. On, 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 set. on location. On location episode. On location, on yes. location episode. Um, we are in the beautiful Victoria Hall. It's gorgeous. It's um, very cool, actually. Yeah. You don't see anything like this around where we're from. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. We are in Coburg, Ontario. Why are we here, Scott? We are attending, well, we just saw a screening of the Emerging emerging Filmmaker Showcase here at the Eye to Eye International Film Whee! Festival, brought to you by Film Access Northumberland. And we were here because uh, my, Tell film, us. my film storage room <laughs> B was uh, one of the films screened. And I finally got to see it. Yeah, you it. just got to see it. I finally got to see it, which is crazy because I know when we first started the sit down, that yep. was a project that you had been working on. Oh yeah. And to now see it on a big screen in person, it was really cool. Well, I mean, even just me seeing it, mm-hmm. that was the first time, that, that, that was by far the biggest screen I've ever gotten to see it on. Mm-hmm. So, it felt really cool. It was cool. Really cool. So, uh, yeah. So, um, here your, we are. Your review, Regine? It was terrible. <laughs> I, knew I, it. I don't know how you made it to become one of the finalists. I don't get it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm just kidding. No, it was, it was really good. And it was so cool to see, I guess, because as we've done this show, um, and meeting your friends to see all the actors come together and to see, it all to like all play out it was really cool it was good it was good yeah it's cool because like you also like a lot of the people who are in the movie you've met because they're either like either in bands with me or like a guest here on our show yeah it was it was cool it was it was definitely worth the wait so you all need to stay tuned and check it out when you can but scott seeing it on the big screen how does it feel oh it felt amazing i mean the thing that was so nice too right is like I don't know, until you actually see it on a big screen, like you always think, like, I hope like it works. And I, also because I, I um, you know, edited the film and did the color and everything, mm-hmm. like you, I have an idea that I, how I want it to look up there, but you don't actually know until you actually, it's like I, I wasn't, I didn't get the chance to like color correct it on a big screen. Like I know yeah. you can go to places and do that, but I didn't, you know, so you kind of have an idea of what you think it's going to look like. And then my other concern was the sound as well, because I had a great sound system in there today and everything just sat where I wanted to, I, I, so as, as from a, just a technical side, I can't speak to like the flow of it anymore because I've seen it too many times, but from a technical side, seeing on a big screen, it was one, I was very happy. Yeah. And um, I was also very like relieved, I guess that, you know, you know, the one thing you don't want is I'll be sitting there and like, I know something sounds totally like janky, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. and then I have to be like, oh, I hope nobody notices. <laughs> you know? We all so. notice. No, it was really cool, especially um, because the audience seemed to really enjoy it too. There were some laughs, which I yeah. made me very happy. Yeah, was I nice. was worried because like I would laugh, but I was just like, I don't know if other people will be laughing just as loud as me, but I was not the loudest laugh in the room. Only problem is it's a, they're supposed to be, um, crying so it didn't work and there was it's, it's a horror short film and here yeah. we are laughing well, because, well I, I mean the other thing is i i don't think it's a like it's not really a scary movie in my view like mm. like i you know i kind of there was a scarier one yeah that's yeah. true mm-hmm. yeah so okay so anyway to wrap up on my film quite happy with it yeah, but sorry. we did see no but, but we saw 
seven other really awesome shorts that I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, like Scott mentioned, it's an international film festival. So there were different submissions yeah. in different languages, from yeah. different cultures. Different parts of the world. It and, was really uh, cool. And also a few other Canadian films as well. Yeah. And so, um, so yes, this is a special on-location episode. Mm -hmm. um, so we just watched the Emerging Filmmaker Showcase, and throughout the day we're going to be watching other films. Um, the award ceremony is later on today. So, I mean, obviously you guys are watching this. This is after the fact. We're pre-recording this here and then you'll see, see it. You're seeing it after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be able to give you updates. And um, also we're going to be grabbing some interviews with, um, well, whoever we can, various people involved with the festival. Yes. Hopefully we'll sit down with some filmmakers, some actors. We'll see what we can get. But uh, exciting times. Yeah, I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to seeing you win an award. If you win well, an award, we'll when you win an award today, I think that'd be really cool to be like, I was there. So you're just trying to call, <laughs> call it in advance? Well, I you gotta claim it. I mean, it's all I about guess. manifestation. Oh, you're, so you're saying like it's like uh, the, the you believe type thing? Yeah, think it and it'll happen. I'll say this it was awesome just to be here. The movie was great, the popcorn is great, the theater is yeah, great. Yeah, that's the thing. There's popcorn, there's a bar over there. We're sitting here in like the little lounge area, bar yeah. area where where we can pick up stuff. There's a silent auction going on over there. It's a really, really nice festival. So we've got a program here. Mm -hmm. we got popcorn. I got myself a nice drink. And you know what's weird? Is holding a microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, we're a slightly different layout. Yeah, I brought, I brought these types of mics because I wasn't sure what the situation was. These mm -hmm. types of mics are better in case like there's a lot of noise, which there may be at certain points of the day. Mm -hmm. So we got these are a bit more isolated in the sound. And uh, yeah, so... Enjoy the rest of the show, everybody. And please, huge thank you once again to uh, the I2I International Film Festival for selecting my film. I'm very honored. Fun! <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we are here with Connor Kuyavinsky, the uh, director of Aspects yep. that uh, screened earlier today at the Emerging Filmmaker Showcase here at the I2I International Film Festival. Hello, Connor. Hi. Hi. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't really know how to start this. I'm, I'm, uh, we started it. We did we it. We started it. We did we it. Did yes. It. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks, uh, for, uh, thanks for agreeing to sit down with us. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, it's, it's been a great day so far, yeah. So uh, tell us a bit about Aspects. Uh, well, Aspects it was my final graduating film from Canada College up in North Bay. And now it just screened at the Idai Festival in the Emerging Filmmakers Showcase. And uh, it's about uh, uh, a woman who is letting go of her past and moving on from uh, someone that she used to know. And, and I tell the story through the, the man she used to know fighting the aspect ratio and uh, that the aspect ratio plays a big part in the film. Mm -hmm. not, only, not only with him fighting it, but near the end on the screen, the aspect ratio closes. Uh, so uh, yeah, pu pulled from my own personal experience and uh, just to kind of, it was kind of like like uh, like a message like to myself like I like I needed to make it for me first, right? Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So where did the uh, idea come from that you were gonna play with, you know, the actual idea of the the screen size basically affecting yeah. what's happening on the screen? Uh, well, it, 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 it's, it's funny because, because I think any artist can relate to seeing something like, like in a film and then sort of stealing it because art, art, whether you're liking it or not, art, a part of it is stealing. Uh, uh, Absolutely. uh and, uh, I got the idea from a 2014 film. It's a French Canadian film, uh, called Mommy, uh, directed by Xavier Dolan. Uh, love that film. It's one of my favorites. And there's a sequence in that film. I, it, it's without giving too much away where this screen opens up and Xavier Dolan plays with that and plays with the audience expectations with that and I thought it was incredible. I, it, it totally blew my mind when I first saw it for the first time and I'm just like, I gotta use this idea in the future again. So that's where the that idea came from. That's a really cool idea and you don't, I personally don't see films like that. So it was really interesting to get your perspective 
for all of you who Thank are you. wondering what we're talking about, you're just going to have to wait and find out and watch <laughs> the film yourself. But film, um, how did you get into it? Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, I, I got into film. Um, pretty much every filmmaker has a story where they got a camera when they were a kid and it, it, the rest is history, which was the same for me. Um, and and it's not too interesting, uh, but uh, yeah, I've just been de I've just been obsessed with film for as long as I can remember. Like Jaws was basically the film that got me into it when I was young, so a little awesome. bit too young. Uh, but uh, then I just continued, continued, continued getting new cameras, better equipment, and then I applied into college. Got into college, uh, happened to make a lot of short films during college. A lot of them not really that good. <laughs> And it's then how, it's how you start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, then for the final film, uh, we were given the opportunity to make like one like one final film. And I decided, well, we got this. We got all this crazy equipment. Like we got Sony Venice, so might as well use all this stuff and especially audio equipment because like that's most important thing. Honestly, uh, as much as Sony Venice is amazing, audio equipment is top priority so uh, I had to take advantage of this and uh, make aspects you know I, I hope that answered the question I kind of rambled yeah. on <laughs> actually one thing I did want to ask from the uh, technical side in fact let's talk about the audio first because you just mentioned it because mm -hmm. I noticed um, like when you mentioned audio equipment the fire burning mm -hmm. was that because I was looking at the fire burning and I, yeah because I noticed that when the, the, at first I thought, oh, maybe that's a sound effect, but there was popping happening in the fire, and I was mm -hmm. wondering. So, was that the actual sound of that fire burning, or did yeah. you add more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Uh, yeah so, sorry if I cut you off. No, no, no. but yeah, uh, yeah. That, that 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 was that was real on set, uh, and it's it's a little funny. We kind of had we had the boom mic a little bit too close to the fire, and, and nothing caught on fire. But it was like I had to tell them, like, hey, can you guys like lift it up a little bit more? <laughs> uh, we got to give this back. Up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got we got to get we don't want to be paying for this equipment uh so uh yes it was all it was all real and captured in camera it like uh yeah so that's why the pops kind of look the same yeah. and like they match and everything because it's funny because i saw it i'm like oh they must in my head i'm like oh you know i probably would have found a f fire sound or like mm -hmm. or, or recorded that somewhere but then when i saw that it was syncing up i was like that would have been a lot of work to make mm -hmm. that happen so yeah so, yeah yeah would have yeah and then the other technical side just like in terms of practically how you did it because like obviously there's a moment where you know there's that goes diagonal mm -hmm. how did you go about um i guess well how did you go about creating that effect because it actually looks like you know the mm -hmm. person's being thrown around yeah and stuff. so how that how did that work yeah um uh so h how that how that happened was uh it, it was like the first question on everybody's mind everybody on the film set like how do we do this? And it was the question I had from pre-production to production. I'm just like, how do we pull this off? And even post-production, I'm just like, if this doesn't, if, if this doesn't work, the whole film doesn't work. Like it has to sell. And um, so the day before, uh, my production designer, one of my best friends ever, uh, made a, made a lot of films with him. Uh, he, uh, we, we almost didn't get the chair to, we, we almost didn't get the chair for the scene. And I thought the chair was so important. And I was also kind of lying to myself, like, is it really that important? But then later, it, like once you see an action, it's 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 what sells it. It's it's really like you, we need something to show that the tilting is actually tilting his world. Um, so we, we needed that to happen. And I, I even like on the day, uh, I wasn't even sure how we were gonna pull it off. Cause I'm just like, okay, it has to be one take. There's no other way we can do this. We can't shoot other coverage of him because he needs to stay within the frame. So how do I like, like how, how, how does this work? So uh, it was it, like a lot of it was pre-production, but then a lot of it also was just on the day, like ooh, scrambling to get everything ready. Um, and originally I had planned not to actually tilt the camera and uh, my great actor, Brayden, who played Axel in the film, who fights the aspect ratio, he fell down so many times. He really, he really committed to it. I, I don't think I've thanked him enough for it. I've thanked him so much, but not enough. Um, and uh, so the tilting, uh, we, for like the first 10 takes, it was a lot of takes. For the first 10 takes, we decided not to actually tilt the camera. It wasn't until the last two takes where we tilted the camera 
and like with my with me cueing everybody else to like pull the chair because we pulled the chair with fishing string and everything um we, like uh it was when we tilted the camera that everything clicked uh, and and i was a happy director i was so happy i was like getting on set and it made the whole rest of the set like every other whole crew happy as well um so so the yeah. initial plan where you're saying when you shot the first 10 takes say you figured, oh, you'll tilt it in post. Yes. And yeah. then when you actually did it, you found it actually was a lot more. It worked way better when we actually tilted the camera on on this on the day uh, because I'm just like, well, you can always, you can do it in post or whatever. But I'm just like, okay, we're here in the moment, anyways. Let's try tilting the camera. And it was when we did that, it was like, <gasps> like the world opens. Like yeah. it was it was crazy. It was really well done. Like my my cinematographer uh, Lee, he knocked out of the park he was so good yeah That's awesome well, it was like uh christopher nolan is the one who always tries to get as much in camera yeah. as he can <laughs> yeah. so, i'm not i'm not quite goes. there yet but yeah <laughs> on the right track on, on the, the right, right track. track yes uh who um who are some filmmakers that or do you have a film favorite filmmaker at the moment are there filmmakers that you're inspired by or that you whose work you look up to um i'm really i'm really uh inspired by the works of uh, roy anderson he's a swedish filmmaker um he's made he's made a film called songs from the second floor i love that film i saw it a couple of years ago just on a whim i would i, I stayed up the whole night and I'm just like you know what? why not watch a movie i don't know wasn't thinking and just blew my mind it's just a series of vignettes of stills of like it's it, like every frame is like a painting like literally like, like like it's not something like wes anderson it's like immediately identifiable like like mm -hmm. wes anderson uh it's funny they both have like the last same last name but um it's it's like e each shot like it's one shot for like five minutes and the scene changes like actors move in and out and stuff happens and the the painting changes it's like watching a moving painting uh and i'm really inspired by that uh kind of filmmaking and xavier dolan of course uh one of my favorite filmmakers um who did who did mommy and lawrence anyways really great filmmaker um and you know the greats like spielberg too yeah 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 like you said you saw jaws yeah too young how, how young is too young uh well i would i'd say like maybe six you know uh, yeah 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 um uh, but yeah i remember i remember pushing in the vhs player fuck i ruined that vhs tape i just ran yeah. it so much you know i feel like I think it's important, like, I think as kids, I think it's important that we see some things that are just, mm -hmm. like, too much, you know? Like, kind of the kind of thing, it needs to, like, slightly, I don't want to say scar you, but kind of scar you. Right? Yeah. And yeah. those, to like, like, I remember as a kid, that was so scary, you yeah. know? And you can always think of, like, yeah. like Jaws, when that <laughs> head comes out. Like, the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? And, like, I still remember seeing that, and it's so, like... Shocking. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. For 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 the for my scene, like the scene that got me, there's a shot where the swimming coach gets eaten by the shark, and uh, he's trying to climb on, climb onto the boat, but you see the yeah. shark under the water yeah, and it right. moves. Yeah, and it that that I get goosebumps thinking about it. Like it's so effective. Yep, the shark still works. I don't think have you have you, you haven't seen Jaws, right? Uh, yeah, you, I think you'll find it scary. It's very worth seeing. Yeah, yeah. and it yeah. Give me the mic. <laughs> this is a different setup. Normally we have our own microphones, but it's okay. Um, I know the next film is starting shortly, but mm -hmm. what was your initial reaction when they told you that you were going to be a part of this festival? Oh, I, I, I was shocked. I thought, like, because, like, aspects, uh, like, not to toot my own horn, I, I, I don't want it to seem like that or anything. Do uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it. Aspects went to, like, uh, like, uh, a, do a couple dozen film festivals prior. Okay, uh, it, it, it was it was it was it was a little it was a little successful. It went, didn't go to any of the big ones because I just didn't have the money. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like it last screened in Kitchener like a month ago, and I thought, okay, that's the last time. That's the last time. And then I told my crew member, hey, thanks. This had a great festival run and everything. And then I got an email like a week later, hey, you got an eye to eye. I'm like, oh sorry guys i lied <laughs> sorry so uh yeah this this will i mean n not unfortunately i think this has had a great run uh this will be its last uh time going to a festival and uh it'll be actually being released uh like so anyone can see it this month in june yes awesome where can people find it uh on vimeo uh and they will also i'm thinking about youtube but stick to, i'm i think i'm sticking to vimeo yeah sweet so uh watch for it um 
the final thing I did want to ask you about is well, a couple more things. But the first one was um, the like the poster, the artwork for it is really sleek with the, oh, yeah. with the way the t- yeah. Tell me about who designed that or what was the idea behind <laughs> it. It just looks I, really sharp and like there's the the, the, the stripe the down the stripe. Side and everything. Uh, that's uh, I made the poster. <laughs> oh. Hey, <laughs> thank, good job. Yeah, th- 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 thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I made I made the poster just uh, like on a like on a whim. Like I, I I was making concepts before, but then I decided, well, not decided. I just made one, and I decided, okay, that's the one that I'm gonna use to send out to festivals and everything. It's very sharp. Yeah, thank you, sharp. thank you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, before we wrapped up up then, I guess um. Uh, is there any social media or people places people could follow you or anything like that? Or uh, yeah, uh, pe- people can find me on uh, Instagram. That's where I post the most. I'm really active on there, Connor dot K U J, and uh, you can find me on YouTube, uh, Twitter, everywhere. Great. Basically. Links are in the description down below, so you can search for those and uh, watch for aspects coming to Vimeo. Yes. Very soon. Maybe YouTube too. Maybe, maybe YouTube. He'll maybe. post, you'll post, on, you'll I'll, let people know. On I'll let people media. know. I'll let people yeah. know. All right, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Connor Kuyavinsky. Kuyavinsky. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Connor. Awesome. Cool. The Toronto real estate market is growing and changing every day. In these challenging times, you need someone in your corner. Jeanette McKenzie, realtor at Forest Hill Signature, is committed to looking out for you. She'll go the extra mile to ensure you have all the information you need to make a decision you can feel confident about. Purchasing a home is one of the biggest financial investments you'll make in life. Don't leave it to chance. Call Jeanette McKenzie at Forest Hill Signature. She's my realtor, and she could be yours. Call today at 416-523-0408 or email at jmckenziehomes at gmail.com. Jewelry forever conveniently located at CF Markville Shopping Center on 5000 Highway 7 East Markham. They do custom made jewelry repairs and they change watch batteries all done on site. Jerry at Jewelry Forever is an absolute artist. Do you have a vision for something custom you'd like made? He is the man to make it. And uh, do you have something damaged that you need repaired? He can definitely do that for you as well. And we have a great deal worked out with them, don't we, Regine? We do. If you go in and let them know that Scott and Regine sent you, you'll get 15% off your entire purchase. That's right. 15, 1-5% off. Mm -hmm. Mention the show. Uh, And also follow them on TikTok. Follow them on Instagram because uh, they have a lot of cool uh, things posted on there about the repairs they're doing and custom pieces they've made. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can find out more at jewelryforever.ca. Beautified by Romina. Internationally trained hair and makeup artist. She is the official hair and makeup artist of the sit down. Not only did she do our hair and makeup. Yes, Scott got makeup too. Uh, for yeah. our official photo shoot. But he, she also does um, everything from weddings, corporate pageants like you see right there. She does it all. Make sure you check her out on Instagram and Facebook at Beautified by Romina. If you would like to advertise on the show. It's very easy, right, Regine? It's simple. All you guys have to do is email us at radio show ad. That's radio show ad at gmail.com. That's right. We do the show live every week, ladies and gentlemen. And we do the ads live week to week. What's that mean? It means you can personalize them week to week. Do you have an event, a sale, something happening at a particular time, a particular place? You let us know. We let your potential client base know in real time. It's a great way to build a brand new relationship with a brand new audience. Get in touch. Radio show ad, radio show ad at gmail. Dot com. Okay, we just got out of a screening of Ashgrove, and we are here with uh, a writer and one of the actors, stars of the film, and also the festival director. Um, we have uh, Jonas Chernick and Sarah Cleveland. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, awesome movie. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, first thing I did want to ask you about was just the improvised element of it. We just watched a Q&A with you as well. But I know you mentioned how um, the idea of a, an improvised film tends to be, they don't tend to turn out very well for very good reason. One time I had to shoot an improvised like thing with a, a sketch comedy troupe, and something like 90% of it ends up on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so I was just kind of curious in terms of when you guys were working on this film, I'm curious, how long did it take you to get that take? And I would imagine also, because it's improvised and you're trying to get those real reactions, I guess the more you redo it, the harder it kind of 
would get over time but yeah it kind of i mean we were the whole thing was an experiment so we were sort of figuring it out as as we went along and i don't think we knew exactly how it was going to work but what we quickly figured out was that the first take was was almost always too long too wordy too much and so often the second take into the third take or the fourth take would be a refining and 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 i like to say we were kind of workshopping the scene through each take and finding a scene so we knew what we wanted from this scene like we knew we needed my character needed this her character needed this those two things were intersecting that's that's drama 101 you know one character wants a second character wants b but those two things both can't happen so you have conflict so we knew that each team was going to be kind of driven by that and then finding it was part of the fun of of, de- of the improvisation was right and and uh, uh we would often click into things that we really liked so the director would say oh but when you when you said that um, that was really great and then your reaction to that was great can you guys try to work that back in and I don't know what you're saying is that so when you do that the next take that's not improvisation really right yeah exactly but the immediacy of how you just did it in the improv it stays with you uh, uh, at least for me as an actor mm-hmm. and so even though I'm maybe saying that line again now and I said it in the last take I'm holding on to the spontaneity of, of what was behind it so it still felt like improvisation if that makes any sense yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You kind of just uh, once you felt the emotion, then you can kind of, as an actor, kind of hold on to it. Exactly. Yeah, it's really cool. Did you find as you were working on the movie, as going through it, like you were saying, you were kind of experimenting as you went? Did you find that like um, the process evolved? Like, did you feel you were getting better at it as you went? Like from the say the first day of shooting, as you were going, you're like, okay, we, we we found this approach. Let's make sure we do more of that. Did you find it got easier as you went along, or? How did the process definitely go? definitely like anything i think you know the, the first few days you're just kind of feeling it out and and once you start to figure out things that work and, and what i mean by that is like i said the first takes were always really long and wordy so but by week two we know we, we know that that's our tendency in the first take is to just go all the way with it so i think we would naturally kind of adapt and 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 do a little less and not push it as far we also would start to figure out like how to work with the other actors like i i did a lot of my scenes in this movie with amanda bruegel and we'd never improvised before together but by you know the second week i think we were starting to understand how the other one works and i would know how to surprise her or how to elicit uh, what i needed from her because those scenes are often about a character trying to get something out of the other character Mm -hmm. and just like in real life when you're engaged with your partner or your friend or your family you know what tactics you know what's going to push your brother's buttons and so you're saving that for the right moment in the fight or or the or or the (laughs) negotiation and so i think the more you learn how the other actor operates then you can start to use those same tactics are you are you like that on your show on, like, we've been doing this for four years and it was similar where the first up epi- the first maybe month of us doing it we were both like mm, like i touched your shoulder i was like oh what should i have not done that and then now it's like i know what pushes his buttons yes. and i do it all the time <laughs> I, I hope we get to see that in action yeah. today well you you go ahead and elicit that that response i'll have to know more about them yeah. first though yeah. we'll work on it all right oh, yeah. I just kind of want to talk, so the two of us are kind of like the two of you, where you are in film, I'm in events, so I'm also an event coordinator um, outside of the podcast. So let's talk about the film festival for a second. This is the third year, correct? Yep. So this is my first time in Coburg. What made you all choose Coburg as the home of the festival this year? So there's a couple of reasons. One, uh, I grew up in Coburg, so I'm from here. I went to high school here. I worked here. I started my family here. Um, so Coburg is is my hometown. The other reason is because I wanted film is also a part of my life. So I wanted to be able to bring that into my into my community, into my hometown community, and offer some some opportunities for emerging filmmakers that weren't necessarily in this in this area. Um, and 
and plus it's gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful town. Uh, it has a very supportive community, especially in the in the in the film and arts uh, world. And and then in using Victoria Hall was just a was no brainer here with the it's beautiful yeah, yeah the beauty of it exactly and the history that goes with it. Very cool. And you're an actor as well. I'm, yes. Have you um, had a lot of um, experience doing any improv while we were on the topic of improv? Just in terms of taking classes, not not on set. Although I look forward to having that opportunity because it's something... Well, that's not true because actually not, lately I've been doing a lot of interviews and um, moderating panels and that sort of thing. And so while it's not improvisation, I'm I mean, still kind of thinking, is, thinking yeah. as we're going along, kind of, you know... I don't necessarily prepare ahead of time, especially maybe in your case, because I've seen the films already, but, um, but yeah, just kind of figuring out people as I'm going along too. I, I d recently did a, a red carpet premiere event where I was able to interview the cast and crew and there's no preparation that really goes to that aside from watching the show first. And even then, I don't think I necessarily had to, it was more just having a conversation and, and getting to know the people. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. In, 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 I mean, most films are very scripted, so it's very rare you come across an opportunity to actually improvise on camera. So it was pretty cool that you, uh, you were able to pull that off. Um, yeah. I'm just going to say, you are viewers who watch us every week. You can tell he's nervous, can't you? <laughs> I, I probably, <laughs> yeah, like, you are very nervous <laughs> right now. What is going I on? I know. I can understand why her beauty is intimidating, <laughs> and I often have he's, the same he's reaction. Normally, not, normally, he's like, all right, guys. Da, da, da. And I'm like, what's going on with you right now? We're are trying you, to be <laughs> professional. Trying to, yeah, we're, we're trying to make this. I, I didn't. We can change this for you. This don't is a worry, serious really program. I didn't, serious program. I didn't catch the nervousness, though, see, because I don't know you. So. I'm just being you know i'm just i'm just cool she's, no this he's is playing it cool pushing his buttons she's oh. pushing his buttons now <laughs> no. I, i'm not pushing yeah, his no. buttons i'm pushing him out of his uh, whatever uh, this is oh. <laughs> but it's good actually that, that is a good point that's yeah. a, that probably will help as well actually um um actually another question i did want to ask though um See? again so well so i mean myself i've made two short films now and one thing i noticed is once a bit of time goes by it tends to go away but when I watch say my first short film a lot of the times I watch I, I in my head think like I know if I were to make that movie again this is what I would probably do to oh if I could if I was going back and doing this again I would shoot it like this do you when you see your projects are there things you go eh, if I was doing that again this is how I would do it this time is that ever you know what you're talking about is 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 from what I understand very common among directors that that's a, I'm not a director so I write these films I act in them sometimes I produce them but I don't direct but my friends who direct them like Jeremy Lalonde who directed this one Sean Garrity who's directed many of my films they apparently this will haunt you forever you'll watch those movies and you'll be like ah if only I had cut that out you know two frames earlier or whoa why doesn't he? I will say that uh, as a as an actor I yeah I I well I don't have that experience as an actor where I don't watch the performances and, and sometimes I'll cringe uh, at something that I, a moment that I don't think I hit properly or I don't think is honest mm -hmm. or I see myself acting and that's awful. I don't like seeing that. So I guess I do. So I guess, yes, I do have that experience. And But as a writer, I, 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 I'm not able to, to, uh, to watch them and think, oh, you know, if I could have rewritten that scene, I would have done it this way. I haven't had that experience. Fair enough. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. In fact, I should ask this question kind of for both of you then, in terms of, of as as actors, because I know there are some actors who, they really can't ever watch their own performances, and then there are some that can. Or like, what what type of actors are you guys in that regard? Sarah, I am not a fan of watching it back. It makes me a little anxious, but I'm getting better at it. I, I find that I'm I. It's good, actually. It's it's a learning lesson for me because watching it back, I'm able to see, kind of what you said. I can see where I've made my mistakes and uh, or my where I would have made a different choice. Um, and and I'm grateful for that opportunity to be able to do that. It still makes me cringe a little. I think it's weird. Um, I could definitely tell when I'm acting, and I I'm not a fan of that. Mm -hmm. But it makes me very happy when I see something that I'm like, yeah, I did that okay. I'm proud of that. So I think kind of. I find it I, I find it um, confusing when I meet actors who I really admire who say they don't ever watch their own work. I find it confusing because 
I don't understand how, and again, I just, everybody works differently. For me, I need to see what I've done to find out if what I was trying to do on the day worked. <laughs> like, I, I know what I was going for here, and now I can watch it and say, oh, okay, yeah, that was what I was going for. Or as, we, as I said earlier, moments where I see myself not being true or honest or pushing it or faking it. Uh, I need to see that. So I go, okay, I will never do that again. Yeah. Well, I, I'll give you an example. I, I didn't know that I do this thing with the inside of my mouth. Apparently, I, when I'm nervous, I didn't know that. Hmm. I just... And it's it's not very apparent until you have a close up, and then it's very apparent. So it's funny. I've never been called on it until the last film I did. Someone said, and and she's French, so she was very funny the way she told me. But the long story short is, she was like, "Please don't don't do that." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." I wasn't aware that I was doing it. But if I go back and watch my previous films, now I see, see it. it. And I didn't oh. see it before. So I'm glad she called me out on it. I'm glad that I'm able to go back and make those changes. And I'm very aware of not doing it now. I do it still in real life. I readily acknowledge it happens. But it, it, I think about it now when I get to set to not do that. Hmm. So I'm glad for that. I would argue that doing it once in a while would is very true to who you are. And might be, you know, I find it like it's an interesting thing. And it tell. It's yeah, it's very personal and it's very intimate and it's like it's a little window into you. So my advice to you, not that you asked, would be don't abandon it completely, Sarah. It's good to be aware that you're not overdoing it, but there's probably a time and a place for the uh, the inner lip bite. <laughs> yeah, I could say that. Oh, yeah, I would agree. How, how did you guys? Cause, so I found yeah, I, I'm, I'm an actor as well, and I found like obviously through the pandemic, everything went full self tape, 100 percent. Yeah, I'm this, curious. This is different for the two of us. We have a different experience when it comes to this. We've talked oh. about that. Yeah. yeah. So how? So, how well, I lived in the states for ten years, and so okay. I've been doing self tapes for well since I started. So for me, it's, I'm very comfortable with it. I I, I love self taping. I love that there's the opportunity to change things up and to ha try different things before before sending it in. I like having I like having that. Um, and so when, when I was, came back to Canada and everyone was concerned about it going to self-tape, I was like, mm, okay, this is great. I already know how to do this. Whereas for you, that was very different. Yeah, because um, in Toronto uh, for you know my whole life up until the COVID, it was all live in-person auditions. Yeah. Self-tapes, I would occasionally do them to send them down to LA, but yep. the in-the-room energy that I thrived off it. I mean, I, 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 that's where I, my career was made in going, I love auditioning. I love going in the room, bringing in and being like, hey everybody, this is what I got and laying on the table and the energy exchange between the director or the casting director or the producer if it's TV yeah. and me as the actor, that's where like, that got, that was like, that got me off. Like that, that, like, that was exciting. Mm -hmm. And now it's all self tapes and it's not the same energy. So my colleagues and I, my collaborators and I, we on our last couple of films, have gone back to in-person auditions and the actors come in and they're like, this is weird. I haven't done one of these in six years, huh. you know? And we're like, yeah. And, and so we like this film, the last film I shot in September, which Sarah is in, that's how I met her. Uh, we had actors come into the room and, and, and we were doing chemistry tests where we'd have bring in a, uh, a dude and, and bring in a girl and let's do it together and, and then mix and match. And like the olden days, I, you, you get a you get a lot more. You get I, well, you can see a lot more, right? Obviously, absolutely. I mean, I guess from the acting side, like there is that idea of, yeah, you can take as many takes as you need and send them the perfect one. Um, yeah, I don't know which one. Well, one thing I noticed this. So obviously, the last three years, I've it's all been self tapes, and then for the last audition I just had to do, um, my agent was like, "Hey, why don't you? You know, it was, it was kind of a larger role. She's like, "Why don't you try one of those like." You can, you know, you can do like an, uh, you go to a studio and they'll, they'll work with you like a, a coach basically. Mm -hmm. And I did that for an hour with somebody where we workshopped the scene. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first time in three years that I've been in a room with another actor workshopping a scene. Mm -hmm. And it was so like, for starters, as I was going to the workshop, for the first time I had that slight nerves you get when you're going into an audition, mm -hmm. which I hadn't had because I can take 500 takes at home, right? Yep. So it was, I realized that there was something that wasn't there anymore. 
that I kind of forgot. It's like you're, you're on a different frequency. Like yeah. you f- everything feels different. You vibrate differently. And that's, that's because of the energy that you're also feeling off of somebody else. Right. Then aside exactly. from how you're feeling personally. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I've definitely had that experience where you, f- you feel that connection with another person, whether it be the person that you're going to be working with or not, even just running lines with someone, it, you have a, a, a different response, I think, for sure. And you're not staring at a, at a wall and you're not <laughs> trying to focus on where is person A, B, C, and D and putting little sticky tabs, <laughs> um, which I have on my lights and on my walls. So yeah. it, it definitely makes a difference. From a director's point of view, and I'm, I'm not a director, so I'm speaking for my, my frequent collaborator, um, Sean Garrity, who's mm-hmm. directed several, my, seven of my films. He, for him, he won't, he does not want to step on set with an actor who's only shown him a tape. Because for him, the relationship between director and actor is integral to the performance. So he wants to know, well, what is this actor might have given the best audition tape ever. But what happens if I need him to do the scene... 70 percent angrier can the actor take the adjustment Mm -hmm. is the actor willing to take that adjustment and able to do it in a way that executes and and it helps him achieve the vision for the film yeah so he always talks about you know how important how crucial that is and and we've when we do in-person auditions the actor comes in sometimes they nail it on the first take he'll give them a, a wildly off base direction that just he would never exactly that he would never use in the film mm-hmm. just to see what they can bring can they take the direction yeah that's right so because I, I know I, I've spoken to some actors who, who think that like the self tape thing is kind of here to stay because of the cost savings yes so w- in your, in your I- ideal situation do, would you because I know some people think maybe you can do self tape for the first round mm-hmm. and then do sure. call ins for what would your if you were you know, setting it up in your perfect situation, how would you set it up? Yeah, I think that's fine. A, a self tape for the first, for the first round, sure. And the other, the advantage of self tape too is that you can, ha- you, there's an unlimited number of them. So it used to be, when there was a roll up for a, a up, up for casting, yeah, you know, maybe eight people would go in and read for it because they'd have to have appointment times and it costs money. Yeah. But you know, a hundred people could now send in tapes and the casting director will find, you know, the best ones and send them along to the director. So I think that's fine for the first round, but then I, 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 I'm very adamant that th- these in-person auditions continue for the next round or for the screen test or the final selection. Yeah. I can see that. Cause there still is like, aside, even just from the performance side, there is the whole element of like, can I work with this person for exactly. weeks and months at a time? Yeah, and, and that's a real, you can't guess on that as, uh, through a self tape. You can yeah. kind of get a, a glimmer of maybe a bit of personality that maybe they could be putting on in, in a slate. But aside from that, all you're seeing is performance and do even you the wanna... self personality could be well that's what i'm saying it could be performance right so you're not even sure but i definitely i mean i've seen self tapes of people and then and then met them and it's not it's not the right match at all uh, like personality wise that you just can't you can't do the maybe do the film with nothing personal to some of them it's just <laughs> it is what yeah. it is yeah well um I, I want to thank you guys so much for doing uh, this interview. I don't want to keep you guys for too no, long. No, it was a great, great pleasure. It was lovely talking to you guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank um, you very much. Ash Grove is uh, available now. Yeah, yes. on Super Channel in Canada and uh, everywhere else in the world. Uh, and it's good. We just watched it. It's good. <laughs> and um, and thank you for having us at the Eye to Eye uh, International Film Festival here in Coburg, Ontario. Yes, and what he forgot to ask is, so yes, the film is available on Super Channel, but where can our viewers find you if they wanted to learn more about the films you're ah. both in or creating. I have no social media presence. That's Perfect. by design. No, really, I literally don't. I never ever joined uh, Facebook even when it was all okay. the rage. I kind of want to ask, okay, final question that yeah. I'm curious just about yeah. that. Uh, tell right. us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good question and uh, the quick answer is that I'm a, I'm a kind of a perfectionist and when I do something, I want to do it right. So if I created a a social media presence for myself the amount of time and energy that i would spend in updating it and engaging would take away from what i really want to be doing which is writing and acting and creating and i would be like everybody else on the planet i would be diverting so much of my time and space and energy into that it would absolutely detract from the time i can spend on telling stories and acting yeah these 
these things eat up a lot. They do, but they do. you can find me. I'm easy to find. I have a I have a website, jonaschernick.com, and my company, my films are, you can find them on bananamoonskyfilms.com, which is my production company. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And, uh, and you? Yeah. I have Facebook and Instagram and a website. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jonas. <laughs> uh, Instagram, Sarah Cleveland. And Facebook, uh, Sarah Cleveland. I think actor Sarah Cleveland, I think is what it is. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a website, sarah-cleveland.com. All those links are in the <laughs> description, everybody. So click down below. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. We're going to go uh, to the clar- closing ceremonies now. So we'll see you there. So see you I'll there. buy you guys a drink. <laughs> all, right. all right. Bye. Cheers. What just happened, Scott? Very fun interview. Yeah. Yes. Great, great, uh, great moments there with Jonas and Sarah. Mm-hmm. And, and you uh, all saw Scott nervous for once. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad that, well, actually not for once. They've seen it before. But it's so good that you pointed it out. Someone has to. It instantly, you know what it was? Because like I was just sort of sitting there. And then when I started the first question, I noticed I started just like. Uh, yeah, you, you got trembly. And I'm and just that, like, what is happening? And that derailed me slightly. Mm-hmm. So you pointing it out, it's, it's similar to like when, when Nina was on and she's like, you look shell shocked right now. He was, it's just I, sort of, I think what it is, is you put a lot of pressure on yourself yes. to be fair to our viewers. We weren't even sure we were going to get that conversation. So you're welcome. Yes. But they were, um, they were great. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is I, like I knew it was going to be like that. It's just, I needed to settle down. Yep. But you know, that's why, that's why, that's why this, this co-hosting team this works. This is why it works. But as we mentioned, um, we actually have a couple minutes. We do have to go find out if Scott won or not. The uh, closing ceremonies, the award ceremonies are about to happen. Yes. And um, this has been a great festival. The Eye to Eye International Film Festival brought to you by Film Access Northumberland. It's a great festival. Mm-hmm. Um, I highly recommend a- attending it if you can next year and every year after that. It's been a great time. I'm really grateful that they uh, put us in there, in their, uh, that they put my film as a selection. And they let us do our show here. And they let us do our show here. <laughs> so, They've uh, actually all been watching us. We've yeah. never done one of the live audience before, but we did Pretty today. Awesome. Yes. yes. So everybody, thank you so very much for being here. Regine, this was great. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for coming. Thanks for driving me here. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Regine, where can people find you? You all can find me on my YouTube channel for the pageant sit down. Um, link is in the description, and you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at it's Regina Elena, where you can also find my day in the life vlog of this experience today. That's right. Scott, where can people find you? Right here. Mm-hmm. Where you're watching this very video, youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. That's where you get the mm-hmm. sit down. It's where you get the gaming. It's where you get the vlogs. It's where you get the... Everything. Everything. The music uh, on, and all the film updates as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but youtube.com slash Scott Dion Brown. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Scott Dion Brown. Um, TikTok, Scott Dion Brown official. But YouTube is the best place because it's uh, all the other things are kind of a satellite for the YouTube channel. Also follow the show, the sit down with SDB on TikTok, the sit down with SDB on Instagram, uh, sit, sit down, down Scott on Twitter, and the Scott the sit down with Scott Dion Brown on, <laughs> on Facebook. Facebook. You can also listen on Spotify and a few other podcast places as well. Mm-hmm, but, but for now, we gotta go. We're going to the uh, closing ceremony, everybody. Thank you for being here. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so very much. This was the first time I've ever gotten to see my film on screen of this size. So it was really, it really made a beautiful uh, this chair on top of the whole experience. I want to thank my, my dad. It was his workplace that we filmed in. Let us get in there for free, obviously. I have two great actors as our leads, Blake Cannon and Haley Midget. They did an amazing job. I was really happy to work with them. I'd also like to thank, as you see here, Brandon McKenzie, who was one of the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> We poured so much blood on him that it ruined his shirt. And it's unfortunate because where he ended up falling, because of the way we had to shoot the film, once he's fallen there, that's where he's going to be. So like, we couldn't even really see all the blood, but I'm glad we committed and thank you for letting us pour all the blood on you. You guys didn't really get to see it, but it was there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much. I do International Film Festival. Thank you so much. Everybody.